What's up YouTube friends? Now today I'm going to show you how to whip up this mask lanyard. They're very fast, very easy, and it'll keep you and your kid from losing your mask. I'll show you how fast and easy they are to whip up next. Alright guys, so the things you're going to need to make this mask lanyard are one piece of fabric of your choice that measures two and a half inches wide by 40 to 42 inches long. And I just went ahead and did 40 inches. If you have a smaller kid, you might want to do a little bit smaller. You just want your mask to set about chest level. And you're also going to need two sets of snaps. I'll also be using my snap pliers. I'll also be using my iron and ironing board and sewing machine with matching thread. Today I'll just use cream. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is grab your fabric piece with the wrong side facing up. I'm going to fold it in half and give it a press with my hot iron. Now if you watch my video on how to make lanyards, I'll put the video right here in the iCard. This is pretty much the same process. So you should have something that looks like this. Next, I'm going to open it back up. And I'm going to fold this raw edge to the center crease. And give that a press all the way down the length of our strip. And now I'm just going to come back and do the same thing with the top edge. So I'm going to fold it down to our center crease and press. Next, I'm just going to fold it on that original crease. And you guessed it, give it a press. Alright, so next I'm going to go to the end, and I'm going to do this on both ends. I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to fold this in about a quarter to a half an inch. Just eyeball it. So maybe like that much. And press. And now just refold everything back. press. Now just to make sure that nothing really comes unfolded, I'm just going to throw some clips in here. And like I said, I'm going to do the same thing to this other end. Alright, so our next step is we're going to take this over to our sewing machine. So on the side opposite of our single fold, you should have two folds. We're going to stitch with the eighth inch seam allowance, back stitching at the beginning and the end. And I'm just going to sew all the way down the length of my fabric strip. Alright guys, so I'm over here at the sewing machine. Today I'll be using a straight stitch and my length is a 2.5. And if you're trying to sew anything like this, together something thin like this it's always easier to start with a little leader fabric first so just sew on a piece of fabric no big deal all right guys so I'll be using an eighth inch seam allowance and I went ahead and I moved my needle all the way to the right if your machine does that that's fine but you don't need to do that I just want to get as close as possible to this edge so I'm going to back stitch at the beginning. And this little leader piece just kind of helps pull it through. So when I'm doing thin strips like this, I like to take my middle finger and my pointer finger. So my middle finger is going to butt up against the edge here. And my pointer finger is just going to make sure everything lays nice and flat. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So this is going to butt up against here, and this just makes sure that everything lays nice and flat, and then just let the machine do all the work. All 
I'm coming up to my end, so just don't forget to backstitch. Next, I'm just going to grab my snap pliers and my directions because I always forget which pieces I need. Alright guys, so first I'm going to do the decorative end. So that goes on my green part. And then I'm going to take the socket and I'm going to stick it in the orange piece. Then I'm going to come about a quarter inch from the end. You could just eyeball this. You want it somewhere towards the middle and then just squeeze. So now I'm just going to follow my strip all the way down to the other end and do the same thing. And I want my pretty caps facing the same direction. So now for my snap pliers, I'm going to remove the green piece and put on the yellow piece. So now I'm just going to take this little prong and I'm going to put it on the yellow piece. And watch your fingers because those prongs are sharp. Then I'm just going to take my stud piece and I'm going to stick it on the orange side. Just like that. Alright guys, now with our socket piece facing up, our pretty little cap is going to face down. I'm going to measure over two and a half inches and then just make a mark. You probably can't see it that well. You can just kind of see the end there on the white where my finger is. And that's where we're going to put our next piece. So I want the plug piece, so the orange side, to be facing up. I'm just going to center it somewhere in the middle, eyeball it. And squeeze. Just like that. And you're going to want to do that to both sides. And that's all it takes to make one of these easy mask lanyards. Now let me go get a mask. Alright guys, I couldn't find any loose masks. This is actually one I haven't sold yet. So I'm just going to open this up. So what you're going to want to do is just put your elastic through and snap. And the same thing on the other side. And now you or your child won't lose that mask. Now this is actually an easier style mask that I have been selling. They do open up and it's pretty much a one size fits all. And it also has a little piece of pipe cleaner in here for the nose piece. Alright guys, since this was a very fast tutorial, I do have a few things that I'd like to promote. So I will have three new tumblers going up on my Etsy shop. The first one I have here is a pink to white glittered ombre with a letter N. Perfect for one of them Husker ladies. This is a 30 ounce tumbler, stainless steel, and it also comes with a lid, a metal straw, and the cleaning brush. There's a kind of a close-up on the end. This next cup is the same size, a 30 ounce, and it comes with the lid and the straw. Now what I did with this one was I spray painted it a base color of gold. Then with my brown alcohol inks, I did the wood grain effect. And actually to get the roses on here, they're temporary tattoos. And this would have to be one of my favorite mugs. I don't know how well you can see it, but it does have a rose here, a rose here, and then there's two little lilies right there. With some little swirly, curly Q things. I just really love the gold as the base coat. And then I'll also be putting up this cup. It's the same size. Now I started with a glitter, holograph glitter, base coat. 
and then with the temporary tattoos, I just laid them over the glitter, and this would have to be one of my favorite cups. It's perfect for Halloween. There's a pumpkin here. Very pretty. I also have a few 20 ounce tumblers. This one only comes with the lid. Now this is a purple wood grain, which I think turned out really cute. And of course the Mickey sticker. I also have a blue wood grain. I just love the color and how this turned out. And this one only comes with the lid. And then finally for the tumblers, I have this red, orange, and black alcohol ink swirl with the Route 66 sticker. It seems very Harley Davidson to me. And then this one also just comes with the lid. Now I also have a couple of these trays. I do hope to get more, but the Dollar Tree cannot keep these in stock. Apparently these are very hot items now. So this is just an everyday tray. This one is just white with a temporary tattoo and an epoxy over it. Now my uncle likes to make his own cigar, so I'm probably going to make him one of these. But you could use it for whatever you want. And then I also did this one. It's going to be kind of hard to see on this wood grain effect. And this was just the gold with the brown alcohol ink over top. And then I did put a temporary tattoo. Now there's two roses right here. And then there's a lady, kind of like a Day of the Dead lady, right here. I'll try to get her on camera. Maybe that looks kind of good. And since Halloween is coming up, I also have a bunch of magic wands. And these are actually up on my Etsy site already. And they're $25 a piece with free shipping in the United States. Now this one I'm calling the Queen Bee. I just think it looks great dripping with golden glitter honey. And only the Queen of the Hive can have this wand. I also made this Necromancer Bone Wand. And I actually sold one of these. This is the second one. I already sold one of these. And these are just hot glue, chopsticks, and some beads. Now one of my favorite ones would have to be this Frozen Elsa inspired wand. It's a base coat of light blue. And then I just dry brushed white and gold on top. And then of course it has the crystal. That's what gives it the magics. Here's one that I thought would look great for any wizard. It's just a spiral design going all the way down. Very earthy, very wood. Great for any little hobbit or wizard. And this is my crazy cat lady wand. Now it's a base coat of purple with a green cat eye on top. Now I do have a little backstory for this one and it's for the crazy cat lady. Now the only power this wand has is it shoots out stray cats. However, after 45 minutes, the cats just implode into black goo. Which is why this cat lady went crazy. Does she use her powers for good? Or does she save all her fur babies? She names each and every one. All right guys, so that's just a few things I'm gonna throw up on my Etsy shop. Like I said, the wands are already up there. I really hope you give this mask lanyard project a try. It's really fast and really easy as you can see. And I think every kid in school needs one of these. That way the parent, the teachers, and even the child don't have to worry where the masks went. If you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, or would just like to leave a suggestion for a future upcoming video, leave me a comment. I'll leave a link down below to my Etsy shop. And I just want to give a big thank you to everyone that already purchased things. I really appreciate that. Friend me over on Facebook at Scrappy's Patch if you'd like to share crafting ideas and pictures. I love to see what you guys are doing. Check out all my links down below if you'd like to support this channel. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a safe and healthy back to school. 
and I'll see you next time. Thank you.